Hello and welcome to my desk. This is Knock, an old school gaming break a break, a fan magazine about old school role playing games. This is issue four. In this Game Master's perspective, I will tell you who I think would like this, who this is for, and I'll show you my highlights. <laughs> there are many of them. So, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get started. So, who is this for? This is for old school gamers that look for more material, ideas and inspirations. And it is for those that are curious for old school gaming and want to have a look at what that could be. And it is for GMs who want to convince their 5e players to try out the old school playstyle. There's a number of articles about that in here. My first highlight got to be the sleeve. The sleeve contains an entire adventure, the Lost City Sandbox, complete with rumors, important locations and NPCs, even a system to randomly generate buildings that are not in the important locations. This might be a good starting point for an underground adventure, for a revolution. It might be a single location in your veins of the earth. There might be an entire overworld above it and an underworld around it. Or just a single adventure that you can maybe finish in one or two sessions. The Merry Mushmen really don't waste space for these knock magazines. Here, on the back of the book, there's a random table. Save against total party kill. If the characters are completely surrounded by the big evil bad guy and very likely to die, maybe roll on this table instead. And then maybe this happens. The smartest character must become the first Hyrax consort and advise them in how best to unite the nine nations of evil. This will definitely become a major turning point in the campaign if you use this and it might be more interesting than a total party kill. Another highlight not to be this bookmark that you can cut out and glue together and have a really chaotic effect random dice. Nifty idea. In Search of Better Travel Rules is just that. It is an examination of existing traveling rules and why they might be boring and what you could do instead. The Blob Principles is about preparing your game. You are preparing entities, places, enemies, friends and items, but you never prepare a plot. This is just how I do it. No paper after seeing rock. You don't change what you prepared because the characters acted in a way that you didn't foresee. Stick to your world building and have the group, you and the group, live with the consequences. Three tiers of truth. So you don't prepare yourself to death. You have to prioritize what you prepare and what you leave blank. Your knavish duties by fellow YouTuber Ben Milton of Questing Beast. This is basically the social contract of the game. The role of the referee, the GM, the DM and the role of the players. And I think following these knavish duties, you will have a more fun game of old school D&D. This goes back to the blob method of prepping. You don't want to over prep, so you leave things blank that might not even come up. But if they come up, you can fill them in, either with a procedure rolling on random tables, throwing dice at a piece of paper or something, or you just patch it by improvisation in your imagination. And your goal in prepping should be that you prep what is most important, that you have procedure to fill in mostly anything else, and that you can 
easily patch small gaps because you've got a picture of the greater whole. For example, you don't need to prep what type of clothing a barkeeper wears. If you've done your prep right, you know what kind of clothing is fashionable and common in your setting and then you can just improvise whatever they are wearing, maybe give them a funny hat and be done with it. Making good rumors. This is number of tables of procedures method of making good rumors. And in old school games, you need rumors so the characters get some information, insight into the world and some motivation to get somewhere. And if you do these rumors right, you can then build the adventure around the rumors instead of the other way around. Localism. We started with the stories, and in the stories almost everything was unique. There was one maze habited by one minotaur, there was one chimera, there was one golem made from the stitched together human corpses, there was one warple blade, one holy man once turned sticks into snakes, and so on. But as Gene D grew and all of the adventures and campaign worlds became interconnected, everything became common. Instead of a single minotaur, you now have an entire race of monsters that live in mazes and there are mazes and dungeons everywhere. So this article calls back to the original idea, to make things unique. You do this by either coming up with your own stuff, but also by excluding most of the stuff from the D&D rulebooks. If you have a game with just human player characters and just very common classes, then meeting the single existing sorcerer in your setting might be a very memorable moment. And the elves and dwarves of your setting might, might remain mystical creatures with strange ways. Certainly worth considering. Layering for dynamic encounters. This is a great concept. You start with your very simple encounter. The tomb. Eight skeletons guard their former captain's tomb. Will attack PCs who enter. Captain wears gold circlet, 800 GP. Just your standard encounter. But by layering stuff on there, giving it a unique description. Mixing the weapons of the skeletons. Stretching but not changing the stat blocks. Changing up the terrain. Changing up the objectives of the fight. You are left with a much more interesting more dynamic and more memorable encounter. The skeletal procession. Six skeletons, heads bowed, stand eternally behind a former captain, skeleton on a throne wearing a circlet, seated in a rotting chariot pulled by a similar horse on a large dais. The captain will ask, Who do you count among your foes? If the PCs answer, the serpents of Nor, the skeletons will not attack. When you give out the loot, the treasure, then you've got the undivided attention of your players. This is the perfect time to put in some background lore and world building. Don't just give them a short sword plus three. Make it sting a former elven blade of the vanished elven empires. Don't just put out generic treasure. Make it unique to your background and get the players more involved with the backstory of your world. My goblins are everywhere. This works in conjunction to the uniqueness problem. Here, your monsters become more mysterious, I'd say, more unreliable by the farmers, the villagers, the peasants that the characters might be gathering information from, rumors from, or might be hired by to root out a den of goblins, not having a lot of information and generally being not very well traveled, very local. Everywhere they go, the villagers will just call the monsters goblins because they don't know any better. So the characters can't rely on just 
knowing what monster it is from the name alone. It might be goblins, it might be kobolds, it might be mushroom men. So the players have to be on guard, have to look for traps, have to ask for additional information and maybe even name the monsters themselves so they can keep track of all the different kinds of goblins they have encountered. Dark Fantasy Island Generator is exactly that. A method to just throw a number of dice on a sheet of paper and create an island for your sea-going adventure. Now useful. Dragons should be unique. Back to the uniqueness. Don't just have chromatic dragons, red and black and metallic dragons. No, every dragon should be its very own unique thing that's just in your game world and just in this one mountain. And they give you some random tables to come up with this dragon. And an example dragon, the Aberdherm, you might use as a quest hook right away. Here we've got four villains, four big evil bad guys you can pop into your campaign right away. The Chimera King, Nereli, the Pale Huntress, the Queen of the Headless Horsemen, who is also an undead headless centaur on a quest for revenge collecting heads. Terpsichore, the Devil Sworn, for your more like intrigue and city focused adventure, skullduggery. Ramhadir, the Blade Bearer. Good stuff. There's a number of adventurers in here to mine for ideas or run as they are. Swamp Renewal. Grandma's Cottage Incorporated and Gift Shop. A Fistful of Feathers. And the Mountain Hall of the Iron Witch. Here at the very back of the book, we have the section Welcome to the Old School. Or how to care for and nurture your 5e friends. With some interesting articles about the old school mindset and play style. What is the draw of the OSR? The philosophy behind Deathbringer, the very minimalistic old school rule set by Den Masters, Professor Dungeon Master, fellow YouTuber. Or Problem Solving My Way to Shadow Dark, a very streamlined old school system that I did a GM's perspective a few weeks ago. And uh, spoiler alert, is a great old school system. Then from 5e to 5b, in defense of character abilities or how to get killer hair. So yeah, knock issue four. When I first read through this, I thought there yeah, wasn't so many articles that I really liked, but as you can see, there are plenty. I've loved every issue of Nock so far, and I can't wait for the next issue. Well done, Mary Mushman. For now, I bid the farewell, dreamers, until we shall meet again.